Welcome back to The Lost Digit. Today we're looking at the rotary encoder. And this is something you can buy fairly cheap online, either as a module like this or just standalone. You can put it into a breadboard. And the purpose of this is to act as a knob. So these sorts of sensors are used as volume knobs a lot of the time. And this allows you to have kind of granular movement so that you feel the feedback of a click and that translates to one click up or down for instance in a volume knob and it also can be pressed so kind of like a switch now when it's pressed the signal goes low and that can be used for typically something like mute so the way this works is we have a clock and a DT and when the switch is turned for instance to the right one of these signals goes from high to low while the other stays high when it's turned in the opposite direction the opposite happens so you can know that it turned in the opposite way and I'll show you that in the code. So the first thing we're going to connect is the 5 volts here on the orange wire and then the ground on the yellow wire and we'll connect that to the Arduino 5 volt and ground outputs. The next thing we're going to connect is the CLK, DT and SW outputs of the sensor. So we'll put the CLK on the black wire and then white and gray for DT and SW. So we'll just connect those to the Arduino to, based on the code I wrote, pins 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to have clock on 3, DT on 4, and then SW or switch on 5. That's all you really need to do in terms of hardware connections to try out the code I've written and get a basic understanding of how the sensor works. So we're just going to connect it to USB and then power on the computer and take a look at the code. So if you open GitHub, the link is below in the description, you'll be able to see this. So here, if you click on rotary encoder and then open the INO file, which is the Arduino file, you can see the code for this example. So the way it works is we start by declaring the three pins that we're using, which are the clock, DT, and switch. And we'll have those on three, four, and five. And then we'll initialize variables to store the readings. And we'll also have one called volume to store the current volume that we're at in this example. So first we have to set up, we'll open the serial connection at a 9600 baud rate and then we'll have the pin modes. So we need to declare the three pins we've connected as inputs to the Arduino. And then we can also initialize volume to zero. Now the following code will run infinitely, so until you unplug the Arduino. So what this does is it takes temporary variables and it reads the digital signals from the sensor. Now these will be either high or low. Now we have to do something called debouncing. So with switches, analog switches, mechanical switches, you'll have a lot of signals um, that in a small fraction of time may oscillate and this could give you bad readings. So to minimize this I have a simple debounce method that I created which is to just have the readings happen twice with a six millisecond delay in between and if the readings are the same, then we do store the reading into the variable of clock, dt, or switch. Then we have an if statement that checks clock and dt. And if it's one is high and the other is low, we know we went one tick to the right. So we can increment volume if it's still less than 50. And the opposite if we turn the other way. So if clock is low and dt is high, it means we did a click to the left. So we could do volume minus minus decrement volume by one and print it out. So I had initially switch here, which allowed you to mute, but with this sensor, there's so much noise that sometimes it would think it's being pressed even when I'm not pressing it. So I just commented that out. But if you have a higher quality sensor than me, you can just uncomment that and use it. So as usual, you could just copy and paste or download the file and open it with Arduino IDE and then upload to your Arduino. As soon as you upload, you can open the serial monitor. And then from there, it'll just 
wait for your movement. So if you pick up the sensor or the rotary encoder, you can do one tick to the right and see that the volume starts to go up. It is a very noisy sensor, so sometimes it thinks, you know, it'll go up, down, and back up, but for the sake of a project, I mean, it's good enough. So it would allow you to set a value for a speaker volume or for the dimness of lights, for instance. Now this is similar to a potentiometer, but it kind of works differently because you can keep spinning it infinitely, whereas a potentiometer has finite limits to how far it can turn. So this does have its advantages on a digital side for things such as volume knobs that you may want to just keep turning even if it's already at its maximum. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you decided to do with this rotary encoder or what else you'd like to see. And I'll see you in the next one.